Well, hello everyone, and thank you for joining us today for another episode on Leaning on Monday. Today I'm joined by my friend Madalena Ginescu, and we are in a situation where we really need to take action and make a change. You know, we have planned to talk about feedback and how to give feedback in, in the workplace, but given the current situation, we found ourselves in, into a situation where we need to help our audience and our leaders, and, and we change subject. And now we're going to talk about how do we deal as a leader with this situation. Hello, hello, everyone, everybody. Thank you, Florin, for having this call, because I'm very, very excited to discuss about how to lead in difficult times, especially when now we are in a direct conflict, let's say, between Russia and Ukraine, and people are on the streets writing about this uh, decision. And I would actually like to discuss with you, uh, for any other leader, if we can transform this big uh, global context into a day-to-day -day, uh, life in our companies, in our uh, teams. We, as leaders, we can also get in contact with these kind of situations where, uh, let's say, an exterior environment that doesn't depend on us particularly can... Um, can um, can move a little bit the company, can move the team and can uh, bring uh, such uncertainty to, to our lives. And I would like to discuss with you and you can share with us what would you think it would be a good idea for a leader to do in these difficult times when they don't expect a certain situation to happen to their companies or to their teams. Yeah, so, so I think after the last two years during COVID, no one would expect that this is how we're going to spend, you know, first of March uh, in, in 2022. So definitely as a leader, uh, I think that's what we're paid for, right? So in normal times, in, you know, in stable situation, you could have a, a manager, like, you know, managers manage systems. And if the system is stable, then you could have someone that just manages. But in these times, this is where we need leadership most. So as a leader, I think the first thing that I see many leaders and many companies do wrong is they already over communicate about the things that they're doing. Like I see this kind of post, we're standing for Ukraine. And I don't know what does mean, that, that does mean for, for me. And especially if I'm an employee of that company, what does it mean for me? So I think where leaders should focus right now is they should focus on their teams and communicate with their teams internally. Right? And, and, and make it a safe environment for their people to be able to share. Now, people have worries. Like, we are worried about, about the future, depending where you are and how close you are you know, you know, to the conflict. And if you have a team there, or maybe if you have uh, suppliers, or if you have customers there, you, know, you could be affected and you could be impacted at different levels. So these are worried. You know, if you just open, we discuss about looking uh, and, and watching TV or, or checking the news. I mean, you don't even have to do that. We are on LinkedIn here and also on Facebook and, and, and YouTube. But on any of these channels, there is enough news and there is enough negativity about the situation that, you know, we could get into that kind of negative spiral and, and start to think that, you know, this is the end of the world. So as a leader, you have to be, you know, the, the anchor for your team and make it safe for them to share and, and maybe share that you're worried. I mean, I'm worried and I, I bet you're worried. So it's okay to be worried, right? Yeah. So that's the first thing that I would do as a leader. I would make sure that I make it a safe environment for my team to share what they're going through. You know, uh, do they have family members out there? Do they have uh, friends, relatives? Are they directly impacted? And so all of those things that um, we need, does it make sense? Yeah, yeah, it makes more sense. And especially during this time, people want to be heard Absolutely. about the struggles. And uh, this actually gives a little bit more uh, humanity to the whole situation. Okay, I'm going through this. I have family there. I, ha I might have colleagues there. I, I definitely have some colleagues in Ukraine. Uh, I can I can tell you that, but everybody's worried about what the what the situation would be. And I think that, as you said, for the leader to be an anchor in this kind of situation, I think the leader should um, or must not be taken over by the emotions. 
Mm. He should be, or they should be uh, very, um, let's say, very solid in, in a solid ground with their own feet. Okay, uh, we are going through this situation. This is something new to us. We have prepared for this moment for our whole lives. Um, and actually, the moment of conflict or the difficult times is where the best leaders come in front. Okay. If you are a good leader, you will be, let's say, it, it, it will show. It will show on uh, on the thing you do and everything that your team is going through. If you're a bad leader, that will also show, will be shown because um, you cannot lead people through difficult times if you are a bad leader. Uh, let's say more wrong things will go on in that team if you if you are a bad leader. So because of that, about this topic, we already discussed a few few weeks ago. Yeah. But what I would like you to ask, uh, um, Florin. Um, is uh, related to the leader. How can a leader make sure that he's not taken over by the emotions during these times? Yeah, and that's a great question. I, I think, you know, it takes a level of vulnerability for, for you as a leader. So um, I would not expect anyone to just be there and say, you know, deny the reality because we really need to have an honest conversation. This is one of the other things that I would like you know, you know, this is what I advise leaders that I coach, but also what I would do if I would be in this situation with my team. Like, I would like us to have an honest conversation say, hey, we have team out there and we've been in touch with them. This is the situation. This might happen or this might happen. Right. You also want to talk about, you know, what could go wrong from there, but also keep a positive, a positive, you know, uh, mindset because, you know, at the end of the day, sooner or later, this will be over too. Like, we don't want this to go longer than it's already, already, you know, has gone. But at the end of the day, let's focus on what we can control, right? We cannot control what happens there, right? What we could do, we can control our reaction to what happens there. So when you as a leader, you know, you, you let yourself to be taken over by the emotion, you know, then... You know, who your who who your people will will have to look up to? They look up to you, and if they don't see some optimism in there, they, if they don't see that you have a solid ground, that you're anchored in the reality, and, and you have some um, you know at least believe that you could do something from here, and you could lead us as a team out of the situation, then what can I do, right? You know, where do I go for this uh, certainty? I need some certainty. I need some optimism. So as a leader, we have to kind of balance this uh, being realistic about the situation, being honest about where we're at, you know, about do we have suppliers there? Do we have customers? Maybe, you know, a, a big part of our income comes from customers in Russia or in Ukraine. What do we do now? What's the risk? It might be that that will stop or, or all, all the other measures that we're talking about, those will have consequences on, on the company. And by showing to your team that you kind of know what could happen, that you have played out these scenarios and that you know what you want to do and what you can do in each of these scenarios, you're really giving them confidence, right? So you definitely you don't want to let yourself, you know, uh, run by the emotions of the situation. Uh, and if that's the case, then, you know, as a leader, you know, you're the, almost the only source of hope for your team. So if you are, you know, kind of tear down by the emotions, now, where do they get that hope? They cannot go to the market and buy some hope, <laughs> right? I mean, come on. Yeah, sadly, we cannot do that. <laughs> So, so as, you, as you just said, in times like this, you know, leaders get to the surface. So, so if you might not be the, the you know, the, the best person to really well communicate this or, or, or maybe you might not be the best person to hold that kind of speech for your team and, and, and create that environment, maybe you have someone on your team which is really good at doing that. Maybe you have an informal leader, you know, that has a really good connection with your team and maybe get some help from that person. And, and try to kind of stabilize the situation because emotions, you know, that's one of the biggest dangers that we actually face right now is for, it's it's actually, it's fear, right? Because of what we see on social media and you don't have to turn on your TV to, to see a, a lot of images that what's happened and you see uh, the stories of people having to, you know, uh, run, run away. 
all of these things create fear. And in the state of fear, we're not able to judge correctly, right? Yeah. So you as a leader, you really need to be grounded into, into something and believe that what we stand for, this will prevail whatever we face. So definitely it's a challenging time for so many leaders. And actually, by the way, that's why we change our next show on Wednesdays, because we had this series of Leadership for the Now, where we interview leaders in, in different aspects of, of leadership. And so we figured out that all of that might be a really good inspiration for people. I don't think leaders at this time need that. What they need is some practical things that we could help them with, right? So over the next few weeks, depending on how, how long the situation will be that way, we're going to cover only about how to deal through this kind of crisis, how to how to lead in difficult times, and, and both on our Mondays, on our Wednesdays uh, shows as well. So so that's what we try to do to actually help leaders to navigate through this. Mm -hmm. I would like to add one more thing, uh, Florin, for to this conversation. I think that the leaders should know that uh, they can also feel the fear. But yeah. you need to be very careful that uh, where you actually put the fear if you if you show this fear in front of your people they need to see you as you said they need to see you a very very grounded person even though you feel this fear emotion and uh, i have i might have once it's one solution for that it's okay for you to just sit down somewhere else where that nobody else sees you and to just feel that fear and to try to to remove or to, to take out all your emotions that you have at the moment and another aspect on this one, you need to remember that in the in the time of uh, of needing crisis, um, you as a leader, even though you do everything you can to make sure everybody is fine, at the end of the line, you will still be blamed for something that you didn't do. And you need to know that this happens to any leader, especially in difficult times. Even though you do everything you can to make sure everything will be all right, somebody at some point will say, yeah, but you didn't do that. You weren't a good leader because you didn't do that. You didn't talk to that person. You didn't go to, I don't know, 200 miles away from here to help one family. Why didn't you go there? Yeah, because I was needed here. So um, we, need to, we need to let leaders know about this. No matter what you do, you will still get a negative feedback from people yeah. but that's up to them and it's about them it's about you you need to by, by the end of the day you need to make sure that you did whatever you could have done in that situation uh -huh. and i would like to ask you something else florin uh, for our next question related to this um what can we do in this situation if we get let's say a, a negative feedback from people that even though in time of crisis we cannot divide ourselves uh, multiply ourselves to be at the same place at the same time in multiple yeah in multi sorry in multiple places at the same time. How can we deal with this kind of criticism from other people? We we really want to be the best we can, but still we cannot please everybody. What can yeah. we do? So that's a great question because what we see right now, many of the reactions people have on social media. Uh, especially on LinkedIn, because that's where, where my attention is right now. It's about why don't leaders do this? Why don't we, you know, take off, um, you know, Russia from the payment system? Why they, you know, and all these actions <laughs> have, have consequences, right? All these actions have consequences. And, and, and this ties back to what we discussed in one of the other episodes, you know, before, is maybe as a team member on my team or you know as a simple citizen i don't i don't see the whole picture i don't get the whole picture i don't get the implication of the measure that i'm asking my leader to do so on one side you know i might want to ask some questions i might want to say well okay so what will stop us in doing this and then the leader could give you the clarification well if we do that we might need to you know maybe reduce our salaries by 20% for the next X months. Are you up to that? Right? Because because that's that might be one of the consequences of what you're asked to do. So on one side, as a leader, we're going to always have criticism and we'll all have critics, but we, we didn't do that or we did that too early or too late. If you look at 
uh, Sweden's reaction or or dealing with with the Corona crisis, right? What what happened is that at the beginning we had an approach which was different than most of the world, and and then later on we have been said, well, you didn't apply too many you know restrictive measures, and that's why you had a you know higher you know death toll or or higher number of cases, and so whatever we did was not good enough, right? Uh, if people yes. people like the freedom. Because Sweden was never kind of officially closed down, you you never were you know forced to stay inside. But now they blame that. Well, okay, yeah, but that had the price. Of course, it had a price, and it always have a price, right? But I think one of the worst things leader could do in this moment is do nothing. Like if we just wait and see, then then that's the worst thing you could do. Because think about that. Even though let's say in the best of scenarios, this is over tomorrow, right? Yeah. You know how much time do you think it will take until this will be out of mind for people? I actually don't know. Maybe one week, two weeks, maybe another conflict <laughs> will take well, over. <laughs> even if we don't have another conflict, I think we're going to, because think about that. People get back to their homes now. So so people that had to flee, yeah. right? Now they get back. And what happened is like, you will see social media will be full of these pictures of their destroyed houses for months. And, and even though the okay. conflict might have been over, right? We're still feeding ourselves with the effect of that. And then, you know, the question, the bigger question is like, if we if we didn't do anything and we allowed for that, then where that might sparkle next? Who is next, right? So I, I don't know what you're thinking as a leader from where you are, but I, from my experience, we need to take action because I, I don't know if there was any time during COVID where we heard, well, I think we acted too soon. And if we look back at two years now, the, the experience with COVID, I always heard about leaders, well, I think we should have closed uh, the borders earlier. I think we should have you know, isolated people earlier. I think we should have taken this serious earlier. I very seldom heard that we acted too late. So in this situation, as a leader, probably even though you will get criticism anyway, the best thing to do is to do something. And this is one of the things that I also advise, you know, tell them what you're doing. You know, tell them, tell, tell your team what you're doing to, you know, to secure the future of the company. Tell them that you're going to be able to work out their salaries. Tell them that they're going to have a job, right? Tell them what you're doing to protect yourself and maybe your family, right? All of those things, because, it, you know, you're a source of inspiration. You're a role model. And people tend to do what people see. So if my, you know, if my leader doesn't do anything or, you know, sits and wait, that I'm, I'm, te I'm tending to do the same. Now I'm not even calling my clients because I don't know what's going to happen. So whatever you do as a leader will be, you know, model in the organization. Does it make mm -hmm. sense? Yeah, it makes sense. I actually have one example here, um, especially about what you said. Show the people what you're doing because they might not know that what you're doing and they would think that you are doing nothing if they don't see anything from you and exactly. i actually have an example with myself i um i took a post from facebook i didn't post in a while because i moved my activity on linkedin uh and people were asking me oh i didn't see anything from you in the past i don't know two three months something like that i i, I thought you were you stopped your activity. I did. I I thought you didn't do anything else. You just give gave up on this. I said no, no, no. I'm doing more, even more on LinkedIn instead of Facebook. But because people didn't see my activity, they they thought I was doing nothing. Huh. And uh, this is uh, this is what we uh, we usually. Um, deal with when we are discussing with leaders and we are and we when we are leaders ourselves um if you don't know what the leader is doing you can assume anything that you want to assume you can you can think okay he's doing nothing he doesn't say anything he he doesn't care about us he doesn't care about me he just sits there and wait he just gets his salary and that's it yeah. but when you actually have a conversation with the leader you will you might find out that he's doing more than you think or more than you know because he's not showing you what he does so um, I think one advice for the leaders would be talk to them, talk to your people, 
let yeah. them know, even though you're doing anything in background, just let them know what you're doing. Because uh, if you leave it like that, they will fill up with all the thoughts they have. Yeah. So instead of leaving them the option to fill with any crap, sorry, any <laughs> any negativity that with, they can think about, you can just say, okay, this is what I'm doing. This is how it impacts us. And this is what my strategy for us to, to continue our journey, especially when you said that we need to make sure that life still goes on even, even when we are in a difficult times. This will stop at some point. We need to make sure that when it stops, it doesn't bring another chaos afterwards. And um, we also need to think about uh, how to how how the leaders can uh, can let the people know about what they're doing. So, what is your suggestion on this one, Florin? Uh, how if I'm a leader, if I'm doing things in the background and people don't see me yet? What would be the best solution for me to um, to let my actions be known to people? Yeah, so, so that's that's a wonderful question, and and I think this is goes back to what I shared in the beginning when I said that I see so many companies, you know, communicating on social media and stating their position, right? And I don't know, I haven't never seen any company stating their position. We are against Ukraine, right? So we assume that. You know, any you know privately owned company should be you know with Ukraine, right? So that's almost like you don't need to tell us that because if you're not with Ukraine, something is wrong with you, and there is a you know some values are are broken there, right? So I think what leaders do now is they focus on communicating this outwardly with their clients or the world, but they maybe do not communicate enough with their teams so if you now you know if, if you are in the office then maybe gather your people around the table and and have that conversation hey here here is what we're doing right here is what mm -hmm. we're trying to do because one of the things that we see now most criticized is that leaders do nothing right this is what we hear, hear now from all all sides it says you know i i don't see any reaction from nato i don't see any reaction from european union you know why is that this is what people ask right why are we not doing anything? But they're probably doing stuff, but we don't know about them. So if you yeah. if you are a leader and you lead a team, then you definitely want to make sure that you communicate with your team more often and, and on, on a daily basis on what's going on, right? Mm -hmm. and, and maybe communicate with your customers as well, right? But unless you have customers in that area or you serve and you have supplier from there, you know, I'm not really too, you know, too affected as a customer, but as a team member, I'm definitely worried about my salary, about my job, and about you know if, if I'm going to have a, a job tomorrow. So I definitely, you know, as, as a leader, want to share that with my team. And and this is also the moment where you know, for example, what I'm doing, right? You know, I just open up my calendar and I offer you know free coaching to any leader that has a team in 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 Ukraine or has a, you know operations there or or just they fall into the category that we're speaking about right now you know they don't have neither of those but they have they don't know how to communicate with them they they have worries maybe they they haven't been through the situation maybe they're in a new leader and they don't know how to deal with the situation with their team and they need some you know a, a thinking partner you know they need someone from the outside to kind of share some you know best practices or or Florian, you know this is my situation how do i apply these tips so if that's your situation you know i just open up my calendar and there will be a link in, in the comments that you could actually click on and just book a time with me like 30 minute slots through you know even today and and, and if not tomorrow for me just to be there for people so this is something that i do and i bet many of our viewers and probably even you you didn't know about that Right, because I maybe didn't communicate it enough. Yes. <laughs> so so, exactly. so that, that's exactly what we need yeah. to do. Communicate more about what we're doing. And I think the, the last thing that, that as a leader we need to do is to give hope to our people. Because in these moments, if you if you as a leader are hopeless, you know, think about if the Ukrainian president will have been hopeless. You know, where would people get hope from? Now they get hope from having supporters around the around the world, right? People are out in the streets and, and showing support, right? The companies are taking measures, they're showing support. And and so, but in the in the place of work, 
like in your company, in your community, in your family, you are the leader, right? And people look up to you to see, well, well Madalina, what are you doing in your workplace, right? Florin, what are you doing in your workplace for us? You know, and, and, and that's where you have to, you, you mentioned something very important. You said, you know, in, in, if in this time, because this is more a psychological, you know, conflict and situation than, than it's a physical. Many of us are far enough from the situation. So you we're not physically yeah. in danger, right? But yes. because we feed our mind with those kind of images and those kind of situations, what happens is that, you know, we, we tend to believe that, you know, this is going to come tomorrow at my door. And so as a leader, I really need to help my team reframe this, right? Like in the bigger schemes of things, right? You know, this will be over too. Like it might take three months, six months, one year. I don't know. God forbid. I, I think it should, it should end today. But still... Even if it takes longer than that, there will be some sacrifices we need to make, but we're going to survive, right? So unless we have something to survive for, to fight for after this conflict, then we tend to believe, oh, this is the end. But it's not the end. And you as a leader, you really need to make sure that you're able to reframe that for your team and help them to make that mindset shift and look at this. Well, okay, this is what this is going on. But the best way for me to serve my 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 uh, family to serve my my company is for me to make sure that we still have business to keep the operation going because if as a leader you know i just shut down things because i don't know and i don't believe that we're going to go we're going to get through this what and, would my team do and right the, yeah and wait for the conflict to to disappear like yeah yeah it, it will not actually we need to take action yeah yeah because otherwise so, what what will going to happen yeah we don't have we don't have salaries right how do we pay salaries like i don't know i mean after just getting out of covid i bet many companies do not have a you know huge buffer just to pay salaries for you know six months with with zero income right so the best way to serve your people is to actually make sure that you refocus them on the conversation mm -hmm. that needs to happen and and refocus them on what's the bigger vision right so we might yeah. be now in, in in a in a difficult situation but this shall end too. This shall pass too. So when that happens, this is what we're going to do. This is the goals. These are the plans that we're working on. And so that's, I think, what, what leaders should do in, in today's world. Yes, I, I think you're very right. Um, and I would like to add one more thing to this. Um, the leaders must have the solution-based mentality. Even though we are focusing on, uh, we are now in difficult times and when the fear is all around us and the worry is all, is all around us, the leaders need to take action on the situation, not on the fear. Mm. So um, uh, this is, in, in all the history, this is what's, uh, what already happened. The leaders, good leaders, the great leaders were people who took action in the difficult times and they were focusing on solutions and not on okay i need to blame this i need to blame that country i need to blame that leader uh the government is wrong <laughs> the queen is wrong things like that so uh the advice for the leaders would be to um look for solution talk to your to, to your teams find solutions together share with them the big picture because they don't know what you know they don't see from where you are standing so they need to to have the vision from you and um what else what what other advice uh, as a, as well, a I, I, have I, any advice for them no i think what, you nailed it. I I mean, that, no i think you you nail it that that's actually what we need to do stay in the big picture and make sure that we keep focus focusing on the goal because i think this is the key as long as you know I'm guilty of that. You know, my wife tells me you're checking the, you know, not the news, but the news on LinkedIn too often. Because right? I'm I'm looking for a, a positive news, right? When Elon Musk said, yeah, I'm going to give you satellite communication in Ukraine. Well, I was happy. I was cheering yeah, for yeah. it, right? So I'm looking for those. But wh why, while I'm looking for those, I'm not able to focus on my, you know, longer term vision and my goal. So I think the, this is a, psychological game this is a psychological you know uh, competition if you like or or, or or you know we're a race if you like and if we're able to deal with the situation 
but focusing on the long term, right? So in today's world, we we're going to ask ourselves, or oh, what would be the best solution for the humanity, for our children, not for me today, right? Because for me today, I, I might feel that I need to keep my my security of my job, but for the company, maybe I need to, you know, lower our salaries for six months so we can survive and we get out of this, you know, better. Or, or for us, if we know we have a, uh, a presence in one of these countries and we risk losing those clients, maybe on the long term is really kind of giving up those clients and actually find other clients in other areas, which will be more sustainable solution. So I think that's key. Being aware of the situation where we're at in, in right now and being, you know, connected to what's happening. That's why we're doing this now leading in difficult times. We're not doing feedback in the workplace anymore because that's important too, but not top of mind right now. So be anchored in the reality of the situation, but always focus on the long-term goal and on, on the on the big picture. Like, you know, in two years' time, we're going to probably, you know, leave this behind and we're going to have, you know, we're going to be in a completely different situation. So let's picture that. And so mm -hmm. let that be our driver rather than fear. And you're absolutely right. That's exactly what we should do. And celebrate any small steps that we're going, that we're doing. Yes, absolutely. any small success, please celebrate it because it's very important for the morale and for, for us to get the, the, the work done and to pass this crisis. Uh, Florin, what would you like to focus for our next uh, topic? Uh, what would you like leaders to know about difficult, uh, of, about leading in difficult times? Yeah, I think we're going to get into um, a more, a little bit more deeper conversation into how, you know, we need to re really define reality, right? We need to define what we're dealing with because for now it's still, there are many things that we look at. We don't really know what this means for our team. So we're going to look at how to define reality and, and also, you know, how to shift between the details of the day and the big picture. I think this is where we really need to focus on more. Like, yeah. uh, now, okay, what this means for us as a team, right? And we're going to look at some strategies that leaders can apply to really get clarity on what does it mean for us as a team, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Are we directly affected? Are we not? And what can we do? And then being able to shift between, you know, the, the details of the day that we need to take care of, then stepping back and say, hey, remember, the person at the other end of the line they might feel differently. They might be in a different situation. So having that perspective and then connecting it to, to the bigger picture, because if we lose focus from the bigger picture, then we're, we're lost. We don't really know what to do. So that's what we're going to look at, defining reality and see how do we get perspective and, and focus on the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. I cannot wait for next week to, next time, sorry, to discuss yeah, so that. Wednesday at 5 p.m., right? Yes. Absolutely. Wednesday. All right. Thank you so much for today. It was lovely. And I hope we added some value to, to our viewers. All right. Have a nice care. day. Bye. You too. Bye. Bye. Stay safe. Bye.